So if you've already watched the topic E review video, I realized that I left out a topic from topic E and I included a topic F in topic in that video. Uh, the distributive property actually came from later on that was in topic F and we left off looking at the relationship between multiplication and division which was from topic E. The other thing we're going to look at in this video is um, some more advanced uses of tape diagrams. But let's take those one at a time. So let's look at an example to uh, examine the relationship between multiplication and division. Um, let's say we have 24 objects that we divide into four groups. The question is how many objects are in each group. I've used a number bond to show this. Um, I could also use a tape diagram to model the same thing. Um, I would break my tape diagram into four parts. I know that the total is 24, but I don't know the size of each part. Um, these two models are both showing me the exact same relationships. Um, the only difference between the two is one is a tape diagram and one is a number bond, but they are really showing me the exact same thing. Um, so, how would we approach this question? Well, we can use any number of methods. Um, we could distribute um, objects into arrays. Um, we could use our knowledge of fours, uh, to do a count by and figure that out, um, and I think that's what I'll do. Um, you're, you're, everyone seems to be pretty good at using, uh, distributing the actual dots or circles, whatever, into arrays, so I'm going to show you a different method. Um, because what I have here is, let's first model this as multiplication. I have four times something equals 24. So one way I could do this is I could do a count by and see how many groups of four that would take me. So follow along with me. That's four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Okay, I've reached my total. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells me that it's actually four times six equals twenty-four. Um, and, and that makes sense. We've got four groups of six, um, or six groups of four, because the commutative property. I could also write it like this. Uh, but what about division? I could also model this problem using division, and I would do that like this. I would say that I have 24 divided into four groups, and then I'd be asking how many are in each group. Um, and I could use the same methods to solve it either way. Um, so, I mean, I'll show you the other one quick. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I then see that in each part of the tape diagram I have 6. So, 24 divided by four equals six. This is going to be true for any set of numbers. Um, one we've looked at a lot is that four times five equals twenty. Um, that if that's true, I also know that twenty divided by five four equals five, and that twenty divided by five equals four. Um, and I can use the commutative property up here to show that 5 times 4 equals 20. Uh, every set of multiplication facts, every pair of factors here, uh, is going to produce four such equations. Um, that they're going to be interrelated like that. Another example uh, would be 8 times 2 equals 16. Uh, now I'm going to pause for a second and you pause the video and see if you can tell me what the other three equations would be here. Okay. 
That one uses the commutative property. And then these two are going to use the relationship between multiplication and division. So that was the topic that I left off from the topic E video. And now we want to look at some of the advanced uses of tape diagrams that we discussed in topic F. And just so you know, um, I don't ever use those topic letters in class because really they don't matter very much. Um, we Math all fits together in a nice way, and it's not important that you know that this topic was from E or F. Um, who I'm really including that for is for parents. Um, in case you're interested in looking at the modules, you can see how these videos fit with what we've been learning if I reference where they come from. Um, and you can see my website for easy links to those modules or just go to Engage New York. So let's take an example problem. Let's say that there are 30 students eating lunch at five tables. I'm going to model this with a tape diagram. There we go. I've redrawn it a little more neatly. Um, that, that actually can matter with tape diagrams, so I always try to do my best. Um, so the whole tape diagram, I said, is representing the 30 students. It doesn't matter if I label the hole on the top or the bottom, as long as uh, it's clear what I mean. And there are five tables, so I'm going to break this tape diagram into five parts. Um, to break a shape into five parts like this, I'm actually going to add four lines, because I already have those lines at the end, and you'll see that that works out. So one, two, three, four. It's n not critical, but I'm going to try to make all of my parts about the same size. You can see that that one on the end is a little long. It's not a huge deal, but again, I'm going to try my best to do that. So I have my five tables there. 30 students among five tables. Um, the first question is, how many students sit at one table? <coughs> now, this is a pretty standard division problem. Um, because there are five at each table, I think a nice easy method here, a nice doable method, um, would be to account by fives. So, five, ten, whoops, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Um, now, how many groups did I count? One, two, three, four. Five, six. So that tells me that six students sit at each table. Now there's a second part to this problem, and this is where things get more complex. How many students are sitting at four tables? Now there's a few ways you could approach this, and I want you to take a minute and think about what would you do if I wasn't here to help you. Now, there's a couple of things you might have thought about. Um, you could just write in sixes in each of these and then use repeated addition. That would be fine. Um, you might have recognized that we have four groups of six here, and you might use four times six. Um, and those are the same thing. Uh, four times six is just another way of saying six plus six plus six plus six. Um, you might have filled in uh, dots or circles to, into those four groups to see how many were there. All of those are valid methods. Um, one thing that would be easy to get distracted by at this point, though, is our count by fives that you see up above still. Uh, that's no longer useful to me. Um, that helped me figure out that there's six in each group, but at this point, I have to stop thinking about that because that's no longer relevant information for this part of the problem. Um, if I was to do a count by fives again and count them up one, two, three, four, 
I'd say 20, and 20 is incorrect. So what I need to recognize is that there are six in each of the tables. And now I'm being asked a question about uh, how many would be at a group of tables, not just one. Um, let's use either of our methods there. Um, I, I'm going to use a little mental math here. I know that 4 times 5 is 20. Uh, that's something we worked on a lot. And if I want 6 groups of 4 instead of 5 groups of 4, I would add on one more 4. So 20 plus 4 is 24. Uh, and that's also going to be true if you do the repeated addition. You'll come to the same answer. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 6 is 24. Um, anytime you're doing math and it doesn't work out like that, it is a clue that you've um, made an error of some sort and you need to investigate where was that error um, because things should always match up in math. Another kind of tape diagram problem is when we are combining instead of multiplication and division like in the last problem, uh, problems where we have multiplication and some other operation or something to, to that effect. Let's say for example that a teacher buys 27 books for the classroom library. Again I'm going to start by drawing that for my tape diagram. Oops. It's not good to have my tape diagram be wiggly like that, so I'm going to redraw it. And this time just to keep things fresh and exciting, I'm going to label the another kind of tape diagram problem is ones where we're going to have to uh, use multiplication division with another operation like addition or subtraction. So let's take for example a problem where a teacher has 27 books to add to the classroom library and the teacher buys an equal amount of fiction nonfiction and poetry. So really what that's telling me is that out of the 27, the teacher has three different kinds of books and they're all equal groups. Whenever we're working with equal groups that's a clue that we're using multiplication and division because multiplication and division deal with problems where we're using multiple groups of equal size. So we have a fiction pile, a nonfiction pile, and a poetry pile. And they're all equal in size. Now, your first instinct would be to say that what the question is going to ask is how big is each group. And you know what? That's going to come in handy. We don't know right now. It doesn't give it to us. It's an unknown. Um, but what the question actually is going to ask us is if the teacher shelves all of the poetry books first, how many books does she have left to shelve? So th there's actually two unknowns here. We do need to figure out how many are in each group. But that's not actually what the question is asking us. The question is asking us how many are there in two groups, and you can see that here, or how many are there if you take away, use subtraction, that final group. And that's the approach we're going to take. You could do it actually with uh, just multiplication here, but let's, let's say. Um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and um, sh show you that there are nine in each group. Now, how did I figure that out? Um, well, this problem, the total is 27. So I could solve that using multiplication. And there are three groups, but I don't know the size of the group. So there's three times something is 27. And, of course, we talked about the relationship with division. That tells me 27 divided by 3 equals the same thing. What is the number? Uh, instead of doing count by from the bottom, I know that 3 times 10 is 30. And if I count back by one group of three, um, that leaves me with 27. So I know that the group size is nine. So if there were 27 books to start with, um, 
So let me mark that in here. This is 9. Um, and I take away that group of poetry. That leaves me with some number remaining. And this isn't the only way to approach this, but I think it's the way I'd like to do it. So I can set that up as a subtraction problem. Uh, there are 27 books in all, and I've done something with nine of them. And how many are there left? Uh, if you're not confident doing this mentally, uh, I suggest setting it up vertically like this. And doing subtraction, we're going to need to regroup. Uh, so I borrow a 10 from there. That leaves me with 1 10 and 17 ones. Um, 17 minus 9 is 8. And I'm not taking away any 10s here. So that leaves me with 18. And that would be the answer to our question, 18 books. There are also problems where you use groups of different sizes and have to add them together or do some other task. So let's take a problem where a child eats eight crackers each day for snack. Um, and on Friday, she drops three on the ground and she only eats five. So how would I solve this using a tape diagram? First of all, uh, because, well, all right, the question, I didn't tell you the question. The question is, how many does she eat in a week? And so the unknown here is the total. And we're going to look at a five-day week. So I know that there are five parts to my tape diagram. And what else do I know? Well, I know that except for Friday... She eats eight crackers each day. Whoops. Now, I'm noticing something that is not great about my tape diagram. Um, I wonder if you've noticed it, too. This box, oops, this box at the end is very long. And I'm going to use it to represent a day that is smaller. So it actually, sh I should draw it smaller. So I've done that now. Um, another way I could have done this is I could have labeled it like this. Um, it, it doesn't really matter which way, as long as it's clear. Um, eventually it'll be helpful to use more of those above and below sorts of labels. But for now it doesn't make much difference. So the question is how many is she eaten all? And this suddenly becomes a simple repeated addition problem. Um, we have four groups of eight, um, which is 32, and a group of five, so 32 plus 5, that's 37. So the total is 37. The difficulty with this problem is not the math. The difficulty with this problem is uh, thinking through what the question is asking me to do. And I wanted to show it as just an example of a kind of problem you should expect to see. And it's going to be hidden in a word problem. I'll read the whole original problem aloud to you. Um, so you can hear what it sounded like in its original form. It says, Tina eats eight crackers for a snack each day at school. On Friday, she drops three and only eats five. Write and solve an equation to show the total number of crackers Tina eats during the week. So, what would my equation be? Well, I have four groups of eight, so I can either do that as repeated addition, like this. And then add on the group of five. Or I can save some space and write it as multiplication. Uh, 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 is the same as 4 times 8. Or I can use the commutative property and turn it around if I want to. And I'm going to add 5 to that. Now, that to me seems pretty obvious from the tape diagram. But from the word problem, it might feel like a stretch. And that's part the point of tape diagrams. It's to help us look at things in a way that makes them more clear. And I hope this video has helped you see that that is true. Um, if you have questions about them, please ask me. And um, if there was a problem that you don't understand, maybe back it up and watch it again, or just ask me tomorrow.